Hey guys, my name is Jackson, and in this video I'm going to show you quickly how to use my infinite, endless, random world generator blueprint. Um, there's a download link for it in the description, and there will also be a link to a trailer slash, you know, a demonstration of what you can do with it in the description as well. But here is a empty project, just a third person template. Um, in the download, you'll get an endless world.zip, okay? So just unzip that or extract that how you normally would, and you'll end up with a folder like this, right? So just copy that, navigate to the content folder of your UE4 project, paste that in there, and it's, <laughs> it's basically good to go. It's that simple. Um, so, well, it's not good to go. You gotta set it up a little bit more. So let me just show you, actually, before I show you how to set it up, let me just show you if you wanna look at a demonstration of it. Um, so in your content browser now, it'll already be there, Endless World, just click that, go to Maps, Endless World Demo Map. Um, and just one thing before you start, uh, what you'll need to do is go to your world settings, select your game mode, which is uh, third person game mode, that's the default for the third person template in UE4. Um, and just set the player controller class, it'll be on my player controller, you want to set that to, it'll be on player controller, you want to set it to my player controller, okay? My player controller is the one that manages the level generation. Or, if you have your own player controller, um, all you need to do to make this work with your player controller is just go add component, um, add in the endless world component, and then off the endless world component, just initialize in endless world component. That's all you've got to do, and it's ready to go. So, now with all that set up, if I jump in and press play, there we go. We've got our world, and the render range is a little bit shit at the moment, so let's bump that up. But let's see. As you're going, you can see the tiles are spawning in front of me, and the old tiles are despawning behind me, and that one floating off in the distance is just the persistent starting tile. So now, some of the settings, go into the Endless World component, right, in here, or you can go to your player controller and click on the Endless World component there, and you can change the settings here. So you've got a few things like the tile size, the render range, this is one of the main ones, so let's bump that up to 10 and have a look at how that looks. So compile, save, jump in. Now, instead of having like three tiles generating off in the distance, we have 10, right? So heaps more, heaps more. Um, and they're taking a while to load in, but that's fine. There you go. And as they're loading, you have options to set if you want them to block on load or not block on load. So if it blocks on load, it'll pause the game while it's loading in the tiles, or you can have them loading in as you're playing. And it'll just go on forever, just like that. Now, uh, if you want to set this up with your... Oh, there's the block on load and block on unload settings. You can tick those if you want. There's also a seed. You can give it give it whatever seed you want and it'll reproduce the same worlds um, consistently. Cool. So now, if you want to build your own map, let me show you how you can do that. Go File, New Level, uh, Default Map. That's basically all you need um, and it'll get started. Actually, no, it's not. Go into Endless World. You need to give it some information for this new map, right? So if I save this map, um, and I just call this, uh, I don't know, demo underscore p, right? Demo underscore p. You need to click on the data table down here, endless world info data table. And then you need to add a new row, right, for demo underscore p, right? And then in here, this is where you give it all the settings that you want it to generate the world from. So random level names, um, you need to add your levels up into the levels tab. So go window, get levels and then that'll come up there. I believe I, I built some before, wherever I left them. Um, here, so I've got a few levels, right? So I'll just highlight all those and just jump, drop those in. They're all just made using not even the starter content, just the default engine content. But important things to note, right? Um, they're all the same width apart, right? So these are 3,000 units apart. They could be 5,000, 10,000, whatever. They all need to be the same, right? So as I'm going through them, you can see that they're all the same X and Y size, okay? Um, and because they're 3,000 units apart, you need to set that in your player controller. So go to Endless World Component, Tile Size, 3,000 units, because that's going to determine the spacing between the tiles as they generate. So now in your data table, add all the level names. So I've got Demo1, uh, yeah, Demo1, Demo1, um, Oh god, what did I just do? Did I just delete that? Demo 1. Demo 2. Demo 3. I'm not going to put them all in. Let's just do that. 
So you add in your level names, give them all a probability of each. So um, if the first one's selected, I want it to always succeed. So have it probability of one. Second one's selected, oh, we could give that, you know, 0 0.7 maybe. And then the third one, let's give that 0.1. Okay, so if that's selected, it has a 0.1 probability of success. If it fails, um, it'll go and select another tile. So that's 10% chance, 70% chance, 100% chance. Now, you might also want to add specific levels as well. So I had a specific tile, this one here. So this could be like a boss tile, an exit tile, or something like that. So that's demo six. So I might just go demo zero six in there and just give it some coordinates. So I don't know, it could spawn at position two and two, right? Um, and I believe that that's ready to go. So if I just jump in now, it's generating the world. Yep, check that out. We have an infinite random world. And now you can see that the lighting is um, being a bit intense, right? So what we can do, um, hot tip, to rebuild the shadows at runtime, um, go to your light source, set that to movable, and just set your skylight to movable as well. And now I might just also um, reduce the render range. I know it does, like five's probably enough. That's probably even quite a lot, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah. There you go, just so it loads a little bit quicker. So you can see we've got our endless world now. And then that's our specific tile over there that's spawned at um, two and two. And as we move through the map, new tiles will spawn in front of us. And the old tiles will disappear behind us. Right, so that's how you set it up. There is a download link for this in the description. Um, there is also a tutorial, a step-by-step -step tutorial, if you'd like to check that out as well. Um, where we build the thing from scratch. So that's all guys. Um, if there's any questions about any of this, drop me a comment below. Uh, have fun with it. Um, send me any pictures or videos of things that you might make with it because I'd love to see how it goes. And yeah, check it out. Hope it's helpful. See you guys later.